Hey guys, and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. We are working more on our off-grid cabin office. We are gonna be rocking and rolling today. We're gonna get to ripping on some boards and get some serious work done today. Let's go. Alright, so I'm sure you're noticing that it seems like these boards are pushing through really hard. And you're actually correct, they are pushing through a little bit hard. But it's not the fault of the feather board and it's not the fault of the dado blades. It's actually the fault of the dado insert that we made. Uh, we made it out of particle board because that's what we had that was half an inch in diameter. And uh, well, it's not smooth. Uh, traditional dado face plates that you would buy would be plastic or metal and they'd be very smooth but with the chipboard it uh, grabs the wood and holds it so it creates a lot of drag on the board and over time we're able to wear it smooth for the most part but until then the first several boards are really hard to push through All right, here, butt them up nice and tight just so I can see like what the, uh, it's definitely got a little bit of a kickback in there somewhere, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's right here, There's a, right here there's a little bump. You see that? Yeah, yep, just did a little divot right there. Tighter now. Yeah, it does. There you can see that it's just a little bit off right there. Right there, it's nice and tight. That's the nice thing about doing the nickel gap is... Right, but even this doesn't look bad. No. It's slightly raised like right here. I mean, that's just the table. But yeah, I think, I think doing the nipple, nipple. I keep calling it a nipple gap. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wide gap. Hmm? That's a pretty wide gap. It's about a nickel. What? That's a fat nickel. Come it's like on. a silver dollar nickel. Maybe it's a quarter. Yeah, I think that's better than a quarter. But anyway, yeah, so that's a little bit of a gap. You know, let's squish them back together again. I kind of like that too. So maybe just a slight hair gap, like that. We call it a penny gap, dime gap. All right, we got a lot of these to do, so let's get ripping. So we had a little bit of a discussion as to whether or not to use the feather board and where to put it. After a little bit of research on several woodworking sites, we figured out the best thing to do was to put it right over the dado and after running a few boards through the dado, I got pretty comfortable with it and was able to start running them through lickety split. Are you ready to help me clean out the chickens? Yep, totally looks ready to work. Definitely gonna need this. 
Uh, so first things first is I actually have to throw all the chickens out the door. Okay, everybody out, out, out. There you go. Everybody, just don't eat the food right there. Go outside, come on. Out, out, everybody out, oh. out. <laughs> just two at a time, okay. Out you go. Yeah, these are all the eggs that I've been collecting. Oh, great. Hey, come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Out you go. Maybe I did it like that. I think that's how I did it. So the chicken coop is not even usually this bad, but you know, winter time, everything freezes. I've had a lot of people recommend the composting method of keeping your chickens warm and composting the poop to figure out how to keep poop from freezing overnight. So I haven't had any luck with that. You get one night where the temperatures drop down in single digits, game over, it's done. So I think it is finally thawed now. Ugh. You can actually see that most of this is actually hay. Ciao.
the next part I am not excited about doing. Before I can get the boards up, I actually have to put the plastic on the ceiling, at least one half, because it has to overlap with my wall plastic and then get taped right at the top. So <laughs> this is a big 25 foot long chunk of plastic, not a 12 foot section like everything else. And it's a lot heavier duty. So it's gonna take a lot of wrestling. I started on this end because I figured that I'd be able to get enough done and uh, not have to deal with so much weight trying to pull the plastic down. So I think overall that works pretty good. So honestly, high five. That went so much better than I thought it was gonna be. Now, a lot of you guys complained and were upset and really freaking out about the plastic on the walls, saying it will mold. Um, there's a lot of information on spray foam. The do's and the don'ts. There's a lot of information on YouTube of people who've had bad spray foam jobs and horror stories of all the mold they've gotten. One thing you won't find are any stories on people who put plastic over closed cell bad spray foam jobs. So this is definitely uncharted territory. I'm gonna tell you that I've looked high and low cannot find any actual articles of people who have done it, any scientific studies. All I can find are people's thoughts and opinions, which don't really count in this. So let me tell you what will happen if I don't put plastic up. In the winter time, this spray foam, because it's not quite thick enough, will transfer cold air. Yes, it's gonna block out moist air, it's gonna block in moist air which is the other factor. Most of your moist air comes in the winter time uh, when everything's closed up and it's obviously moist inside. In houses, you have showers, you have cooking, you have lots of people breathing. It adds up moisture fast. So you have moist, warm air hitting, boom, cold spray foam wall. Moisture in the air gets shocked, it condensates, it drips down and it puddles all along your wood. Now I can tell you firsthand all about condensation in the wintertime. When we lived in the camper, I would put towels under all of the windows 
to soak up all of the condensation just from one night. And nobody took showers in there and we didn't cook in there. Everything was done outside. That condensation was just from our breath. Yeah. So, um, it sucks. That much condensation in here would rot this thing out in one year. Cannot have that happening, okay? I cannot go get a spray foam kit and respray foam all of these walls. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do a good enough job. So that, not gonna work. Putting plastic over closed cell spray foam has not been tried. If it has been, no one's reported on it yet. I looked all over the internet, could find zero information. Even Spray Foam Jones didn't know what to say about putting plastic over close up. No thoughts. It was just get them back out to redo the spray foam job. I kind of, it's not really an option. I'll just leave it at that. It's not an option to have them come back and redo it. So option number two, last resort, plastic. So what the plastic is gonna do, we are taping all of our seams. We are taping every point. We're taping around every connection. We're taping every point where there might be staples, where there might be nails. This sucker is getting closed in. So that way, that warm, moist air doesn't hit that cold spray foam. Instead, it hits the boards. There's nothing cold here for it to condensate on, so it continues to move. Now, could it potentially condensate on the front surface of the plastic? It's possible. But again, it hasn't really been tested and tried, so it's kind of gray area right now. But I know, like I said, if I don't put the plastic up, I will get condensation in all of these areas. It is guaranteed. So I figure it's easier to put the plastic up now. And uh, if I have to rip it down later, then I have to rip it down later. But I'd rather do that than have to try to put it up later. Oh, and lastly, I thought of this way back when I started studying about spray foam and bad spray foam jobs. I picked up this nifty little set of moisture meters and temperature sensors. They're gonna go in the ceiling and I'm gonna go on the walls. So that way I can track live what the temperature is in every wall and what the humidity level is. So if there's any issues that are gonna happen, I'll know instantly which area is gonna be the trouble one. So unfortunately, when you're dealing with other people's mistakes and um, there's only so much you can do. You're not the professional, you're trusting them to do the job. All you can do is the best with what you're given. That's why I'm going to the effort of trying to do so much of this myself. If I mess it up, I'm responsible. I get to have the burden of trying to repair it. And I know how to repair it, hopefully. Like the electrical. You're just going to have to trust me on this, guys. I know it's tough. and I know you're cringing. I'm cringing. But based off the research I've done, this is going to be the best way for me to go with what I have. So. so I appreciate all of your thoughts and ideas on this project and you know, we're getting to the point, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek on this. <laughs> These are my epoxy boards. That video is coming. That was, an, that was another experience, let me tell you, working with epoxy. It's kind of a love-hate relationship, but anyway, uh, today I'm going to be putting these boards up on the wall. I'm scared to death. <laughs> Really, I'm scared because it's uh, you know, something new. Anyway, next video, yeah, you guys will get to see uh, the epoxy and the sanding and putting the boards up. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you guys could hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed, and if you could hit that thumbs up, it really helps me out in the YouTube analytics. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great weekend. Love you. Take care. Bye.